Hi everyone, my name is Manish Gupta and in this video I'm going to talk about how you can do unified vision language understanding and generation using blip model. So let's get started. What is the blip model architecture? Why was there a need to create this new multimodal model called as blip? Right? So vision language pre-training has become very popular in the few recent few years, specifically in the past year. Right? And most of these models which do vision language pre-training they essentially uh, uh, either do understanding or generation, either classification or generation, not both. Right? And also, you know, although the initial model, for example, Visual Bird was sort of trained on small hand labeled data uh, like Coco data sets, uh, more recent models have been trained on larger amount of data set, which is which has been obtained automatically from the web using alt captions. Right. And this data set is noisy. So although these larger data sets give you better results, but can we get even better results if we somehow can remove the noise from these large web based data sets? Okay, that is the question that the blip model guys try to answer. And uh, uh, well, the blip is essentially a model which has been trained using a cleaned large scale data set. And second, it has also been uh, trained in a way the architecture is is such that it can do both understanding and generation. Okay, of course, you see the architecture on this slide. Uh, the blip model actually contains uh, uh, two main important parts. The first one is multimodal mixture of encoder decoder kind of an architecture, which is what you see on this slide. And then the second part is essentially captioning and filtering, which I'll discuss on the next slide. Okay. So let's talk about this multimodal mixture of encoder decoder and how this sort of enables blip to actually do both understanding as well as generation, both of them. Okay. So a blip, uh, uh, so this multimodal mixture of encoder decoder kind of an architecture that you see in this slide essentially contains three main parts. Uh, the first part is unimodal encoder. So these two uh, towers that you see are unimodal encoders. The second part is image grounded text encoder, and the, the, the third, and then the third part is image grounded text decoder. Okay. Of course, since there is a decoder, it basically supports generation. That's the main idea. And since there is an image grounded text encoder, this basically is going to you know, do the encoding in a multimodal way. Okay, so let's look at them in more detail. So, you know, the, the first part uh, is the image encoder. So this is of course a unimodal just an image encoder. The second part is text encoder. So both of them together are the unimodal encoder part. Okay. Now the unimodal image encoder is basically a VIT model. So VIT B or a VIT L model, the base model or the large model. Um, and uh, you know uh, basically vision transform model which divides the image into different grid and then basically processes it using a transformer multiple layers of the transformer encoder self attention feed forward and so on okay the text encoder is basically a bird based model so of course it has the bidirectional self attention the typical self attention that you see in transformer encoder models like bird and then it also has the feed forward sub layers right and it's repeated several times so this is a bird based model uh, now that's basically, uh, you know, unimodal encoders. Um, of course, the BERT model takes a CLS token in the beginning and then can take a text as you see here, right? So, if we, so this uh, multimodal mixture of encoder decoder models are pre-trained on image captioning data. Image captioning data available from several data sets, which I'll talk about in the next few slides. But uh, the, the idea is that they make use of data set uh, from COCO, from uh, conceptual captions as well, from Lion, from uh, you know, from from SBU, all of those image captioning data sets. Okay. Now, uh, so so therefore, there is an image as an input, and then you know there could be a caption as an input, or essentially you want to generate the caption depending on how you want to look at the task. So if the caption is being taken as input, what you want to do is to predict whether the caption matches with the image or not. In that sense, right? So that is also an interesting image captioning related task. Okay. So the uh, third part here is the image grounded text encoder. So as you see, you know this is also a transformer based model, which basically takes input as uh, the text part along with the prepended token encode. Right? And then it has your bidirectional self attention layer like a typical transformer encoder, and it also has a feed forward sub layer, but then it also has this cross attention sub layer. So what is going on is that the representation of the image that is flowing in is basically passed to influence the uh, the the uh, the transformed embeddings of the text, right? So essentially using cross attention. So therefore, you also have this cross attention sub layer, right? So that's that. Now, uh, image grounded text decoding basically takes, uh, of course, your images. So you you basically pass on this image, and there is a cross attention sub layer here as well. But it also is uh, you know it it has this causal self attention mask. So in the sense that it's basically a transformer decoder in that senses. So as you notice, the transformer encoder and the uh, or rather the image grounded encoder and the image grounded text decoder do not talk to each other these two guys do not talk to each other but 
Uh, the difference is that here you use bidirectional self-attention layer, uh, while in the decoder you essentially use a causal self-attention layer. Right. So that's that. Now that's basically the basic architecture of the blip model. It's no big deal. It's essentially just a transformer kind of an architecture. However, it has, uh, uh, you know, um, it, it has it has those uh, uh, appropriate uh, um, appropriate um, you know um, appropriate towers. So appropriate uh, uh, self attention layers at the right at the right uh, uh, corresponding to the appropriate encoder or decoder. Now let's also talk about uh, what are the pre-training losses. So when you pre-train this uh, model, of, uh, of course, uh, using captioning data, what are the losses? So ITC is image text uh, contrastive loss, so which basically says that, hey, given an image and text pair, positive image and text pair, you want to match the image with the positive text and ensure that it uh, uh, ranks the negative pieces of text lower down, right? So essentially you want to keep uh, uh, um, you want to ensure that uh, uh, it's a typical contrastive loss, which has been also used in several other models like clip. Right? So you want to ensure that the image and text, the positive pair is ranked higher and the image and negative text pair are ranked lower. And the same thing also holds on the other side that, uh, you know, text and positive image are ranked higher and text and negative images are ranked lower. Okay? Another loss function is ITM, the image text matching loss function, which is basically given an image and text pair, do they match with each other or not, right? So this is just a binary classification loss in that sense. It's an encoder, so of course, comes up with a binary classification loss. And then you have a language modeling loss. This is basically a decoder, so essentially it, uh, um, it tries to generate the caption. So given the image, it sort of tries to generate the caption, and then uh, you can compute the cross entropy uh, loss uh, using, use, uh, so basically the standard cross entropy language modeling loss. So this is how this Okay, so this is how the uh, you know multimodal encoder decoder model is pre-trained. Now that's good. So essentially, the pre-training as it is showing here, you know, this part is pre-trained in the first step. So multimodal mixture of encoder decoder, and the model is pre-trained using image captioning data. Uh, it makes use of human labeled data, image and text pairs, um, you know, like Coco, and also it makes use of uh, web-related data sets like uh, conceptual captions, SBU captions, and so on. Right. So your data set comprises therefore of uh, human captions and web texts, right? Human captions and web texts, human annotated data as well as web filter, web annotated data, web annotated data. Okay. Uh, now what you want to do is to bootstrap, uh, you know, being um, blip basically stands for bootstrap. So you want to do bootstrap and therefore train a better model. So you want to do data bootstrapping, right? You want to clean up your data. So blip does cleaning up data in two ways, uh, captioning and filtering. Okay. So let's see how both are done. Okay. So essentially, uh, you take uh, the uh, multimodal mixture of encoder models, and then you actually use it to initialize two different models. The one is called uh, the first one is called filter. The second one is called captioner, right? So both of them are pre-trained, uh, are initialized from the same multimodal mixture of encoder uh, decoder models, right? But then you further fine-tune them using human data. So essentially, you take the human labeled data, um, uh, right, the Coco data, <coughs> and you fine-tune the captioner. Captioner is, of course, a decoder, so therefore you you fine-tune it using language modeling, language model fine-tuning. And then you know uh, you see the uh, filter guy. The filter guy, the job is going to be uh, whether this uh, caption is suitable for this image or not. So therefore, its job is going to be more like classification, right? So therefore, you fine-tune it using ITC and ITM losses. Remember, image text uh, contrastive loss and image text uh, matching loss. Okay, so that's that. Now, after you basically uh, do this fine tuning, you you uh, using using the Coco data set here, right? So you basically have gotten a refined or a fine tuned filter and captioner models, which are then used so as to generate synthetic text examples uh, for uh, web web uh, uh, images. So you get the web images, generate synthetic text, synthetic captions, or you also take the web images along with their uh, uh, noisy captions, and then you filter out the bad ones. Only keep the good ones, right? So only keep those web captions which are which are which are filtered out and nice ones. Okay. So the synthetic ones, and then the uh, the, the the retained uh, good ones, good web ones, basically are combined so as to give you the overall data set. Now you take this overall data set and you essentially you know further uh, further uh, train your further pre-train your multimodal mixture of encoder decoder model, which is basically the central blip model. Okay. So the central blip model is basically therefore um, you know uh, pre-trained in some ways in two steps. The first step you just do the typical pre-training uh, with all the noisy and garbage things as well, you know, from the website. But then you actually have a bootstrapping, uh, a filtering and a captioning module in between, and then you essentially pre-train again. Okay. So how does blip perform? So of course. Um, uh, these guys essentially evaluated the blip model across several several tasks uh, uh, right so we'll talk about a few tasks here so for example the first level of uh, um, uh, evaluation was done on these two tasks image text retrieval and image captioning okay 
Now, for both of them, uh, as you see, uh, they have compared with several other baseline methods, right? I'm not going to deal with the baselines or talk a lot about those baselines, but you see they've compared with state-of-the-art methods that you see, okay? Of course, they uh, experiment with the two important data sets, Coco and Flickr data set, and uh, therefore uh, what they do is they take their pre-trained model, which has been pre-trained in two stages, right? Uh, and then they fine tune it using uh, ITC and ITM losses on image text retrieval task, right? So essentially you have a Coco and a Flickr 38K data set, and you fine tune on both of them so as to, and then basically report the metrics on their test set versions, okay? The metrics are basically computed for both the text retrieval, image retrieval, right? And then you see the recall values that you see there, right? Uh, now, uh, blip model can be fine-tuned. Uh, uh, they do two types of pre-training. They basically do pre-training using just 14 million uh, image examples, and they also do pre-training using 129 million. This 129 million one basically also uses a part of the Lyon, the huge Lyon data set, right? So that's that. Now. What you observe, uh, and, and then what you observe here is that uh, capped, uh, cap filled L essentially uses the large sized uh, model uh, as, as the base model for uh, filtering and captioning. And, uh, you know, uh, but the but it basically makes use of the base model for the actual blip encoder, right? Uh, while blip wit L basically uses the uh, wit large model for both captioning, filtering, as well as the backbone, as well as, as, well as the visual backbone in the blip model, okay? So what do you observe? You of course observe that the metrics in this block, which is basically corresponding to the blip model, are much higher compared to the metrics in this block, which correspond to the baselines. Okay. Uh, also, what you observe is that if you use uh, uh, captioning and filtering, you actually get better results compared to not doing captioning and filtering. Not doing captioning and filtering, right? And then of course, if you use the large model as a visual backbone, you get even better results. So the last row is of course even better results. And these are results, of course, for image text retrieval. Okay. Similar things you observe for image captioning. So remember image text retrieval is an encoder application. Image captioning is a decoder application, right? So, so of course the models that are baselines that are compared here are different. So, uh, and uh, you observe uh, that, uh, well, I mean, uh, th these results are computed on two data sets, Coco Caption and no caps data sets. And uh, you know, on sub data sets of these data sets as well. Now, since these are captioning, uh, you know, generation kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, tasks, uh, CIDR and, uh, uh, you know, the CIDR, CIDR score is what is reported here. You, you know, there's also this uh, uh, another score which is reported. I think that's the slice score, uh, which is also reported. But then these are basically, um, you know, uh, generative model scores that have been reported here. Uh, the blue at four score, and then again the CIDR score that you see there. So on both of these data sets, what do you observe? You observe that on average, this is the overall score. You observe that uh, on average, even the blip 14 million model is actually better compared to uh, so many baselines, so many baselines, right? In fact, the blip 129 million model is actually better than every baseline clearly. In fact, it is even better than the 200 million, uh, I mean, a model which has been trained on 200 million images. So 129 million image trained model, pre-trained model is better than 200 million image pre-trained model, okay? Uh, so that's that's basically the broad observations. Basically saying yes, Blip sort of outperforms in that uh, you know in that in that uh, uh, range of pre-training kind of images. It outperforms the existing models both on image text retrieval and image captioning tasks. Now they experiment with several other tasks like visual question answering. So and uh, NVLR, natural language, visual reasoning, visual dialogue. Right, these three main tasks. And the way the experiment is was what is being shown here. So for fine tuning. Uh, VQA visual question answering task is basically given an image and a question come up with an answer. So it's a generative task. And therefore they find the way they fine tune is to basically pass the image to the image encoder, use the question encoder so as to basically come up with a image influenced um, you know, representation for the question and then use a decoder so as to come up with the decoded answer. So notice that they basically don't make use of the text encoder here at all, right? Uh, uh, from from the from the multimodal mixture of encoder decoder model, right? So that's that. Now uh, uh, for the NVLR task, the NVLR task is basically predicting whether a sentence uh, uh, describes a pair of images or not, right? So essentially, is the sentence related to the pair of images or not? Okay. So you have two images as input and a sentence, and you want to basically predict true or false. Okay. So. Uh, since there are two images, they basically make use of uh, uh, image encoder, uh, of course, for the first image and the second image, and then they make use of the same, uh, you know, um, uh, so so the encoder, which basically has a cross attention from the image side, right? So, uh, uh, so basically, uh, they have uh, two cross attention layers uh, at every sub layer, at every layer in the transformer, uh, in, in this particular transformer encoder. And then uh, they also have a merge layer, which basically either is a average pooling layer, which uh, you know average pulls outputs from the two cross attention layers, or concatenates followed by a linear projection. Right? So that's that. 
Now, for the visual dialogue kind of thing, you have to predict an answer, of course, but uh, this time you have to condition it uh, given an image, given a question, given the dialogue history, come up with uh, the image caption or the answer in that sense, right? So you have several things. And uh, again, the kind of network that they have is basically they take the image, they also encode the, uh, you know, um, uh, essentially, um, they, they also encode the caption, uh, or rather basically the question, right? And uh, then they further, uh, you know, take the output from both of them and uh, use cross attention so as to start generating, uh, or, or basically, yeah, so as to, uh, so in this particular case, they just basically predict whether this uh, image caption uh, is, uh, or rather whether this particular uh, uh, question answer makes sense in, in the context of this image uh, along with the caption, right? So they basically just predict true and false, and therefore they pass it to the dialogue encoder, right? So which basically uh, it takes uh, not just the image with the caption, but also takes, uh, um, you know, um, the question answer dialogue history and the image inputs coming from the image encoder. Okay, so that's that. So they basically set up these fine tunings uh, appropriately depending on the task. And of course, in the paper, they show that they come up with really good results. In fact, they show that on image text retrieval, they have state of the art results um, uh, compared to the best baseline improvements, right? Uh, even on image captioning, they come up with state of the art results. On visual question answering, they come up with uh, better results on the data sets that they experiment with. I've not shown the results here, but you can look at the paper, right? Now further, they say that although their model is just for a text and images, but they also want to experiment with videos. And they try to experiment and figure out if they can somehow come up with really good results even on video language tasks, right? So they do zero short learning for two video language tasks. The two tasks are text to video retrieval uh, and video question answering, right? So text to video retrieval is basically, you know, given a text, find the relevant video from a large collection of videos. Video question answering is given a video and a question, come up with an answer, okay? So they experiment with these two data sets, MSR VTT and MSVD QA data sets, question answering data set, right? Uh, MSR VTT is basically this uh, text to video retrieval data set, okay? And uh, the way they experiment is that they take a video, they sample, uh, you know, some fixed number of frames per video. So for example, for retrieval, they sample eight frames, for question answering, they sample 16 frames. And then they just concatenate the frames, frame features into a single sequence and give that as input. Of course, doing this basically loses all the temporal information in the video, but even in that case, they're able to show that they get actually better results compared to the baselines, uh, you know, which uh, also made use of the, of, the, of the sequence or the temporal behavior of the video itself, okay. So that's blip. Um, so, you know, in summary, blip basically consists of uh, two main parts, a multimodal mixture of encoder decoder model and captioning and filtering, right? Uh, and uh, uh, this blip is basically uh, a new uh, visual language pre-training framework with the state-of-the-art performance on a wide range of downstream vision language tasks, including uh, understanding and generation tasks. We talked about several tasks, image captioning, um, image retrieval, uh, visual question answering, natural language visual reasoning, and we also uh, talked about this visual dialogue task. Of course, you know, uh, they also show good results on video-based tasks. Okay. So that's it about blip. Now, blip, of course, is not a new paper. Uh, I chose this paper because, you know, uh, after this, I'm going to talk about other uh, variants of blip, like blip2 and instruct blip. Um, and that's why basically, you know, uh, we will discuss those papers in the next few videos. Okay. Hope you liked this video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my search on my homepage. Thank you.